Hello everyone and welcome to game 3 of their semi-final match in the Opera Euro Rapid. It's Magnus Carlsen versus Maxim Vachel Lagrave and in game 2 uh, Magnus almost got his second win but then he overlooked uh, uh, the exchange and Maxim was able to draw that game and now again Magnus with the white pieces and again Maxim goes for his uh, Groomfell defense and uh, let's see what happens this time as uh, it, it seems to always go well. First I thought uh, I'm not going to cover this game then when I saw what, what was happening I thought oh yeah I'm, I'm definitely covering this game game then I was like nope not covering this game and then well uh, you'll see so uh, Magnus with the white pieces again opens with d4 uh, we have knight to f6 c4 and g6 uh, we have knight to c3 and d5 the Grunfeld defense is on the board but this time Magnus doesn't go for bishop to d2 as he's probably expecting Maxime uh, to have uh, looked up some of the variations that were played in game one. So here he switches it up and goes uh, into the, uh, sorry, first captures, 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 uh, and now e4. So just uh, challenging the knight without this bishop to d2 uh, in between move. Knight captures, b captures, and bishop to g7 now. So just the normal exchange variation. We have queen to a4 with check, and again queen to d7. And we have an early queen trade. We have captures, captures, and now rook to b1 going after the b7 pawn so here b6 and this position has been reached before bishop to d3 is an on move bishop c4 is an on move uh, but in the game magnus goes for f4 uh, he grabs this center massively here and it is uh, as of move 10 that we have a completely new game so let's see how uh, Maxim deals with this. Uh, of course, uh, as you would uh, when you play the Grunfeld, you play c5. You attack white center. That's why the bishop is on g7. Uh, we have knight to f3 defending and now bishop to c6. Putting pressure uh, on Carlsen z4 pawn. We have bishop to d3 defending. Uh, you can't go d5 uh, uh, because bishop captures on c3 comes with check. So bishop to d3 and now knight to d7. Just continuing development. We have king to e2. And now e6. Uh, so here we have bishop to e3. Uh, again, just continuing development. And now uh, another uh, usual idea as the e4 pawn is under attack, just c4. You try to trade your c4, uh, c pawn for white's central e4 pawn. Of course, Magnus doesn't allow that. He goes bishop back to c2. And now knight to f6 with a double attack on the e4 pawn. Uh, we have knight to d2 defending. Uh, and now comes b5 as the c4 pawn was also kind of under attack. And now that the pawn has been advanced so far, uh, Magnus attacks it with a4. And you cannot uh, capture the pawn. If you capture it just rook a1, uh, then the, the pawn will uh, be easily won. And then you've just ruined your pawn structure on the queen side for nothing. So here after a4, we have a6, just defending that. And now only now d5. A very interesting idea by Magnus. Uh, because it seems like uh, what what are you doing? I mean, uh, black can just capture that. But after e cap uh, e captures on d5, Magnus pushes e5, and now we have this very. A uh, very interesting position that Maxim probably hasn't encountered before. He did spend some time here. And in the end, he went for knight to e4. Which doesn't uh, seem to be like the... Uh, the absolute best way uh, to go about it. Uh, knight to g4 seems to, seems to be the best idea, but then you have to meet bishop to c5, preventing b black from castling, and he didn't want to uh, meet that. Uh, probably king to d7, just keeping the king at the center of the board, and then developing the rooks. But instead, he goes knight to e4, uh, now puts pressure on the c3 pawn, this would come with check, and he would pick up the rook, so here Magnus just grabs it. Uh, we have knight captures, Pawn captures and rook h to d1 now, grabbing hold of the open d file. Uh, and here, Maxim finally castles. Uh, and now, as uh, Magnus is the one currently controlling the d file, he goes for this very nice rook lift, uh, attacking the bishop, and Maxim defends it. Rook 8 to c8. Uh, we have a captures once, a captures, and now. Uh, you might be expecting rook to d1 or rook to a1, just uh, either doubling up or putting the rook on a nice open a file, but Magnus does none of that. He actually goes for the exchange sacrifice and plays rook captures on c6. And he will grab two pawns while he's at it, so uh, definitely worth it. Uh, he will play against two rooks, but he will have the bishop pair. So rook captures, and now comes bishop captures on e4. Uh, this is great because it comes with an attack on the rook, and you cannot defend this pawn. The bishop covers all of the dark squares. So here, rook to a6, and now rook captures on b5. Uh, we have rook to d8, and now comes rook to c5, uh, getting the rook uh, to, to attack the c pawn as well. 
rook to a4, defending, and now king to f3. Uh, we have bishop to f8 by Maxim, uh, challenging the rook, uh, forcing the rook to move away, and now rook to c7. And now Magnus will try to get his uh, light square bishop into the attack. Somehow uh, you want to go after this uh, f7 pawn. So uh, we'll, we'll see uh, if he can maybe uh, get it in there some, somewhat like this. Or maybe f5 will be an idea. So all depends on what Maxim plays. So here bishop to a3. Maxim, uh, this bishop was doing nothing there. And he wants to play bishop to b2 and grab this c3 pawn. So Magnus says, all right, you go after that. I'm just going to play f5. And now you do not want to allow f6. If f6 happens, then the king is just stuck there. You constantly have to worry about your back rank weaknesses. So g captures, we have bishop captures. And now and now you have to feel that you are in danger. Uh, rook to a5 has to be played uh, for specific reasons. So rook to a6, also a possibility. But here, Maxim played bishop to b2. And now he simply allows a very simple pawn push by Magnus, which Magnus played pretty much uh, uh, very quickly. Uh, he played e6. And now what do you do? If you capture, then uh, the h7 pawn falls. But if you don't capture, uh, there's uh, not much you can do here. Rook can capture on f7, pawn can capture on f7. You have to worry about all sorts of ideas here. Even e7 is an idea in some lines. So uh, Maxim captures, but now uh, comes bishop captures on e6, king to h8. If you go to uh, king to f8, then it's just a very quick checkmate. Bishop h6 check, king e8, and bishop f7 checkmate. Uh, the king has nowhere to go. The rook is covering the 7th rank. The bishop covers f8, and this is defended. So instead, after uh, bishop captures with check, king to h8 is played. But now, uh, uh, feel free to pause the video and uh, win the game for Magnus. There is only one winning move here, so... Uh, you know, be careful uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on the not delivering check with the bishop. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's uh, uh, rook to c8. And after this rook to c8 move, there is nothing black can do. Uh, this is just a game over. Uh, point is, if the rook is captured, then just bishop to d4 is checkmate. Uh, the king has nowhere to go. And if you don't do this, there's nothing much to be done. You're going to lose an entire rook here. And even if you play something like rook 8 to defend your rook, uh, the bishop to d4 check is still checkmate made because this rook is now pinned so very very tricky move this rook to c8 idea because even magnus missed it magnus played bishop to d4 check right away and uh, Mag uh maxim now only has one move and it's a great move uh rook captures on d4 uh pawn captures and bishop captures he gives back the exchange he picks up a pawn and he's very happy now he survived checkmate and he's now uh, still fighting it's uh, an end game uh, of opposite colored bishops so here, uh, bishop to f5, going after the h7 pawn. And now to defend it, uh, Maxim has to give up the c4 pawn. So rook to a7, now guards this square, and now comes rook captures on c4. Magnus grabs another pawn, but now he's only up one pawn, and it's uh, opposite color bishops, not, uh, not a lot you can do here. But you can try and... Uh, you know, bleed your opponent dry. Uh, it is a, it is a rapid game, so why not try? We have bishop to f6, and now h4. Magnus will start pushing those king side pawns. King g7. We have king to g4. Uh, we have bishop to e7. Maxim just has to wait uh, until M Magnus pushes those pawns all the way, and then he's gonna blockade them. King to h5, and now rook to a5, uh, attacking the bishop here. So g4, defending, and now rook back to a7. Uh, we have rook to c6 by Magnus and now bishop to f8. Again, a nice waiting move, waiting to see what Magnus does. g5 by Magnus and now rook to b7. Again, another waiting move. We have bishop to c2 uh, and now comes uh, bishop to b4. So asking what, what is your plan? We have king to g4 preparing to continue pushing those pawns and now bishop to d2. Uh, the, the, the rook should never really move from the 7th rank because then you allow check, pick up the pawn uh, and so on. So that rook is pretty much stuck there. So rook to h6 going after the pawn this way. But now the king just moves. King g8 and the pawn is sufficiently protected. Uh, we have rook to d6 attacking the bishop and the bishop to c1 now. Uh, we have bishop to e4 by Magnus attacking the rook. Uh, and here we have uh, rook to c7. And rook to c7 is a pretty big mistake. The rook must remain... 
uh, not only on the seventh rank, but also if you can't do that, uh, you have to at least play rook to b4 and pin this bishop. And then uh, once you force the king out, then you continue checking the white king. However, here after bishop to e4, uh, rook to c7 was played, but now Magnus has a very, very cool idea. He instantly plays rook to d8 with check, uh, and now the problem is, uh, well, none of the none of the uh, moves work because you have to move away from the defense of the pawn. And once Magnus grabs that, it's just uh, two extra connected pawns. It's it's game over. So to show you what happens if the king actually defends the pawn, king to g7, uh, you tell me what happens. Feel free to pause the video here and try to find the only winning idea for white here while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on, uh, you know, uh, going for that, uh, you know, a, a precise mating net. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, the only winning move is bishop to d5. Uh, so congratulations to everyone who found that because now uh, you can see that there is nothing you can do. Uh, rook to g8 is coming and all of the squares are covered. This is covered by the pawn, this is covered by the bishop, and this will be covered by the rook. So rook to g8 will in fact be checkmate. There are no good moves here for black. You could only play something like rook here to give up the exchange, uh, as now you are guarding the g8 square from the bishop, uh, but just captures, captures, and now it's rook against the bishop and the white is up a pawn. This is easily winning. So instead, after this rook to d8 check, uh, Maxim saw that this isn't working because of this, so he played uh, king to f7, but here Magnus just played bishop captures on h7, and he was in this position on move 50 that Maxim Vashiolagra resigned the game, as now he's down two pawns, and of course he uh, he knows very well that um, Magnus will uh, win this very easily. Uh, so yeah, uh, Magnus wins game one. Uh, game two uh, ended in a draw, even though Magnus was pushing for the win and the game three ends by Magnus winning. So we'll not uh, be even seeing game four as Magnus already won the match. So very, very exciting stuff. But he also won the match like that uh, against Dubo and then Dubo retaliated on the second day. So Magnus has to be very careful. Maxime will uh, play play very, very aggressive tomorrow, I, I, I imagine. Uh, but as far as the Grunfeld goes, it's uh, uh, it's uh, two to zero uh, in, in Carlsen's favor. Favor, so not yet a, a victory for, for Maxime in Grunfeld. I don't actually know if uh, Maxime ever got a win in Grunfeld against Magnus, uh, but I will check. Uh, so uh, you know, I, I will mention it in, in the next video. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I will check up on the other match um, uh, t tomorrow morning. So we're going to check out some of the games from that. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Michael Sakarias, uh, Will Cannon, Tom Roberts, Mark Dago, and uh, uh, Pratamesh Mahajan for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the uh, of this very nice rapid tournament, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.